Hello, hi, this is Jay Chung. Um, I work for uh, Viasat. Uh, Viasat provides, uh, you know, geo satellite internet service to um, commercial air and other um, um, businesses. Um, so who actually try to use uh, internet while flying? Anybody? Okay, I try, see. Try is the operative word. Okay, and then like, how is your experience? Try is the operative word. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So um, the thing is, um, you know, when uh, most of the traffic was actually over TCP, um, uh, you know, the satellite internet providers are actually terminating your TCP and, um, you know, do the optimization in the middle so that you we can actually have a good experience. But now, um, we're just moving towards and, um, you know, quick. So uh, there is no place for um, PEPs, uh, you know, performance enhancing, uh, enhancing um, proxies. So what we are trying to do is we are actually, uh, you know, uh, working with um, universities to actually see if we can improve the transport layer um, performance over not just the... Um, satellite but like high bdp networks and um today mariam is going to present uh you know um her recent work thank you mariam you're on yep <clears throat> hi everybody i'm mariam atoy a phd student at uh, worcester polytechnic institute in uh, Worcester, Massachusetts, United States. My supervisor is Professor Mark Kalepul, and we are working with Feng Li and Ji Chang, uh, the scientist in Viasat company. And also Pinhan Zhao uh, is an undergrad student that worked with us at the earliest stage of our work. Uh, we are working on TCP to improve its performance for slow fat links. Uh, and uh, as you know, the Joe satellite is one of the important part of the network and it can overcome some uh, network limitation. Uh, for example, it allows the operator to point each satellite uh, at a particular place uh, on the ground to always cover that area. It can provide uh, internet on airplanes during the flight and also it can be helpful during natural disasters, especially when the network structure is disrupted at that situation. So there are many efforts to uh, improve the performance of Joe satellite. And uh, recently it's bit rates, it's increasing to uh, 20 times, uh, but it has a challenge and its challenge is uh, its latency. It has a high latency and it is about 600 milliseconds for each round trip. Uh, and this latency can impact the TCP bit rates. Uh, let me to show you that how TCP works again and uh, uh, why the um, latency can impact its bit rate. As you know, the TCP sends one window of data for each RTT, and after receiving the ACK, uh, it doubles the window size, and it continue this work during slow start and double uh, the window size for each RTT. But the window size is limited by sender, receiver, and congestion windows. The TCP limits the size of the windows to the smallest of these three windows. So uh, when a link have a high enough latency and high enough bandwidth, uh, the network can have a, a fully utilization. But uh, for example, for a fat a slow link that this window size is too small for that, it cannot have a fully utilization. Uh, you can see here the impact of the uh, limitation of uh, the window size on the performance of Jolink. Uh, we do several runs to download for two uh, minutes our Jolink, and you can see the result here as a graph. The top is throughput, then RTT, then uh, receive windows, and at the bottom, uh, the congestion windows. 
Uh, as I said, the Linux uh, Windows size default is too uh, small. It is about four megabytes, but uh, our capacity uh, our uh, capacity of our link is 144 megabytes per second, and therefore the Windows size with four megabyte size is too uh, small for this. And you can see that it limits our uh, utilization and our throughput. And this is because that. Uh, we have a receiver windows and a uh, and congestion windows uh, with a constant rate and uh, because it limits with the Linux default. Uh, last year in NetDev conference, we recommended a, a bigger window size. Uh, and you can see the message of that here. Uh, this is the capacity. This is the delay and the dash. A uh, line shows the uh, limitation of the uh, utilization that it is based on the default of Linux. Uh, the network uh, within this area uh, are fine. They can have a full utilization, but the network beyond that, uh, like Geo and uh, 5G, cannot have a full utilization. Therefore, we uh, recommended a uh, to a uh, bigger window size. And we can see that Geo and 5G are within the uh, area. The default uh, window size for uh, Linux is about six megabyte and four megabyte, but uh, we recommend it at uh, 26 megabyte. And uh, for the rest of my talk, uh, I'm assuming the recommended line. Uh, TCP at the first time is in the SLU start, and then after it uh, faced with uh, packet loss, it exits from uh, SLU start and goes to the congestion avoidance and set a new SS threshold. But uh, we want to uh, avoid packet loss and exit at the better point, at the optimal point to don't counter with the packet loss, don't encounter with packet loss. Uh, higher start is designed to exit TCP slow and start before packet loss and uh, it is on as a default in Linux. When high start works well, it exit slow start before loss and it avoid overshooting, but when uh, it doesn't work well, it exit slow start prematurely. So uh, we want to know that how well does high start work for a Joe satellite link. Uh, for this, we need to run several uh, experiments uh, on Joe uh, link, and therefore we have two test beds for that. Uh, one, uh, this Viasat test bed that we have a server that it is connected to the uh, university network, and also we have a client that it is connected to the uh, Viasat satellite with the modem and rotor. It has a high RTT. Uh, it has a consistent capacity with single satellite, and uh, transient uplink scheduling can impact act timing. Uh, we also have a Leo test bit as a, a, a fat slow link. And we can see that it has a variable link capacity. It is too sensitive to the weather. Uh, it has asymmetric links, and the downlink bitrate is higher than uplink bitrate. And transient uplink scheduling and handover may impact act timing. Uh, we do several runs uh, to have uh, bulk downloads uh, when high start is on and when high start is off to compare their performance. And also, uh, our measurements uh, are taken at the sender side. Uh, as a result, you can see here uh, one of our experiments. Uh, we uh, do several runs to download an object. Uh, when high start is on and high start is off. Here you can see the graph for the average of our result. The X line show the X uh, axis shows the download size and the Y axis shows the time. Uh, and the uh, blue curve is uh, when high start is on and the uh, uh, orange is when high start is off. 
as you can see, uh, when we want to download one megabyte, uh, we can see that uh, when high start is on, it takes 50% longer than when high start is off. And also, when we want to download uh, a five megabyte, that it is the average size of the website, uh, when high start is on, it takes two longer than high start off. Therefore, uh, we need to know why a high start cannot help for Joe satellite link. Uh, so we try to do several runs uh, on Joe satellite link to download for uh, 30 seconds. And here is the result for the, aver uh, the average of the result uh, as a graph. Uh, the top graph is throughput, then RTT, and the bottom is congestion windows. As you can see, uh, at the first part of the RTT, uh, we can see that uh, RTT goes up and down, and RTT increase, but download is not saturating link. But TCP uh, consider this uh, increment of RTT as a saturation and consider it as a sign to exit uh, from a slow start. Therefore, finding the exit point by delay is not uh, good enough for uh, Joe satellite link. <clears throat> we also do some tests to download our Leo link. Uh, you can see that we have a several run uh, during 10 minutes, and uh, the bottom graph shows the RTT, and the top uh, is a throughput graph. Uh, as you can see in the RTT graph, uh, the RTT varies a lot between 20 to 60 millisecond, and also throughput sometimes is high and sometimes is low. Therefore, uh, we can see that the RTT and throughput varies a lot, and uh, we can conclude that the delay still is a problem over Leo link. <clears throat> we also try to test the different exit points of our Leo link by having the high start on and high start off. Uh, <clears throat> this scatter graph shows the exit uh, slow start for different runs uh, when uh, the high start is on and high start is off. The uh, x-axis shows the time of the exit and the y-axis shows the uh, congestion windows at the time of the exit. The purple uh, points show the result of uh, when high start is on. And we can see that it exit too early and it kept the congestion windows at the small size. But uh, the uh, green points shows when high start is off and we can see that it exit uh, later than uh, high start on and uh, the congestion windows is much bigger. Uh, we also try to have a graph for throughput uh, when high start is on and high start is off. The x-axis is throughput and the y-axis shows the cumulative distribution of this. Uh, the green curve shows when high start is on and the blue shows when high start is off. As you can see, uh, the high start uh, off is to right and therefore uh, it has a more throughput than high start on. Uh, and also, uh, we have a graph for retransmission. Uh, you can see that the x-axis is the total retransmission and y-axis is the cumulative distribution of that. And also in this graph, the high start off is to right for all the time than high start on. And it shows that we have a more retransmission during high start off and it is the packet loss. It shows that we have a packet loss during high start off. So uh, we can conclude that high start is ineffective for Leo and GeoLink. Uh, we also have a different exit points over GeoLink. Uh, you can see uh, that we have uh, several runs to download for 30 seconds over uh, GeoLink. Uh, the top graph is throughput, then sample RTT, then congestion windows, and the bottom graph shows the packet loss. Uh, 
Uh, the vertical dash blue line shows the uh, exit as low as start time, and uh, a vertical uh, dash red line shows the capacity of our link. When we exit uh, uh, too early with high start is on, uh, we can see that it exits uh, before throughput ramps up, uh, and then we turn off high start, and we can see that it exits too late. It exit after throughput ramps up, but uh, we uh, have a packet loss, we have a huge packet loss, and also additional packet loss after that, and therefore we have a fluctuation in congestion windows, and so the recovery time takes a long time, and so we have a fluctuation in throughput, and uh, consequently the throughput uh, decrease. Uh, so we need to exit an optimal point. You can see here the result that uh, we exit at the optimal point. You can see that we exit after throughput goes up, but we don't have any fluctuation and any packet loss uh, during this test. So we need to find the optimal exit point. As a test, we uh, uh, test our <clears throat> that mm, Joe satellite link uh, for different exit point with different queue sizes. Uh, as this graph shows, uh, we uh, download 80 megabytes object uh, for several times, and here you can see the average of the result for different queue sizes. The x-axis show as low start exit point times, and the y-axis shows the time to download 80 megabytes. Uh, the green curve is when uh, we are in a, uh, we are have a full queue size. Uh, the brown shows when we have a half queue size, and the blue shows when we have a quarter of queue size. As I said before, when we exit too early, we have a huge cost. Uh, it needs a, a high time to download 80 megabytes. Uh, object and also when we exit too late, especially when uh, we have uh, a small queue size, it needs a high time to download. Uh, but when the queue size is uh, uh, at a full size or uh, in the in half of the size, uh, uh, its cost is less. But we need to find the exit to find the optimal exit point, especially when we have a uh, uh, a small queue size. Uh, here we uh, try to download uh, uh, 30 meg uh, 300 megabyte of data over Joe link for uh, when high start is on, when high start is off, and uh, when we exit at the optimal time. Uh, we can see that when we exit prematurely, uh, we have a time uh, more than 50 seconds to download. When we uh, exit too late, we have a, a lower time, but uh, we have a cost again. Uh, but when we exit at the optimal point, uh, we have the lowest uh, time to download. So we need to exit at the better point to have a better performance. And so uh, we try to find the exit point based on bandwidth estimation. Uh, I think it's good to have a review uh, uh, over the link between sender and receiver. As you can see, we have a bottleneck uh, in our link. It is thinner than sender size and uh, receiver size. Uh, when we send uh, the packet back to back from the sender, when it goes to the uh, bottleneck, it appears the uh, space between the packet and it continues until it receives at the receiver side. So we can find the bandwidth by dividing the packet size with this time. But uh, we need to do this at the server side. So uh, we can use ag pairs uh, to find the bandwidth. Uh, as you know, we have a, uh, we uh, know that uh, when uh, our ag packet are received, therefore we can find the t 
time between two uh, egg packet, uh, egg, uh, the time uh, between uh, an egg pairs, and also we know that how many bytes is act during this time. So we can use this information to find the bandwidth by divided the bytes act uh, with the uh, egg pair time. Uh, therefore, uh, here we have a pseudocode of our algorithm to uh, compute the bandwidth for uh, between uh, egg pairs based on egg pairs. Uh, we have a current time, and it is the time that uh, now we received the egg. Uh, we know the time of previous egg, and we can find the difference time between uh, egg pair. We also know that how many bytes is act until now, and we have the. Uh, we, uh, we also know that how many uh, bytes is act uh, before the previous act packet, so we can find that. Uh, based on this information, how many uh, bytes is act mm, in the uh, packet pair time? So, based on this information, we can find the bandwidth with divided the bytes act with the time of between two act. And then uh, we set the previous bytes act with uh, current bytes act and previous time with current time to have uh, information for next act that we receive that we will receive uh, we run uh, this code on our server and uh, we uh, record all the bandwidth estimation uh, for the run you can see here uh, the result of one run uh, over joe satellite link we group the bandwidth estimate for each round trip uh, from round one to round five. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, we have a graph for uh, that the x-axis shows the estimate bandwidth for them, and the uh, y-axis shows the cumulative distribution of the estimated bandwidth for each round. And the uh, uh, dashed uh, vertical line shows the capacity of our link. You can see that at the first round, we have a few uh, sample, and uh, most of them are too low. They are lower than one megabyte. Then uh, it continues in round two, and we have a mm, much. Uh, we have a bunch of uh, sample that they are that they are too low, and also in round three, and it is because the Viasat uh, is a spacing uh, egg packet. But we can see that after round three and for round four and round five, we have a sufficient uh, samples. Uh, we have a bunch of samples that uh, are too high, uh, some samples uh, that are too low, uh, but we can filter out them and see that the median uh, of the samples intersect the uh, dashed uh, line. And therefore, it informs our algorithm. So uh, we uh, try to insert bandwidth estimation uh, to the array for each uh, RTT. And when uh, the RTT round ends, uh, we found the median uh, uh, the array. And uh, if it uh, and if this median is greater than zero, we can set the SS threshold for exit as slow start. And uh, otherwise, we should clear the array for the next RTT. Uh, we are called our algorithm uh, bandwidth estimate as low as start, and for short, uh, best. You can see the result for our algorithm that we compared it with high start on and high start off by uh, doing several runs to download 80 megabytes over Joe link. Uh, when a high start is on, you can see that it exits prematurely, and therefore it uh, needs the high time to download. When high start is off, it exits too late, and uh, it has a lower download time. But in our algorithm, it exits at a better point, and we can see that uh, it has the lowest download time. 
we also examine our uh, uh, our algorithm with the different queue sizes. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the x-axis shows the slow start exit points. The uh, y-axis shows the time to download 80 megabytes, and each curve shows the different queue sizes. Uh, as I said, uh, we need to exit at the optimal point, especially when we have a, a small queue size. And uh, here you can see the result of our uh, algorithm. And you can see that uh, it is near the optimal exit point for different queue sizes. Uh, as a conclusion, uh, we know that the slow fat links uh, need larger sender and receiver buffer sizes in Linux than uh, defaults. So Joe links and 5G links uh, cannot have a fully utilization. Uh, and uh, slow fat links have a challenging until, he, until it can get the right TCP window size. And it is uh, critical because if it exits too early, uh it cannot have a fully utilization if it exit too late uh it uh encounter with packet loss and uh we found that the tcp higher start exit too early for leo link and joe link so uh we are used in our algorithm the packet pair bandwidth estimation to set as a threshold and you see that it performs better than high start over dual link. Uh, you also can see our code in uh, this link, the GitHub link. And here uh, we are continuing our work to accommodate Leo link characteristics. Uh, we want to uh, improve the parameters for uh, current heuristic, uh, such as number rounds, percentage of distribution. Uh, we want to find the median from limited space and also filtering out extremely low or extremely high estimations and evaluate our approach in more networks. Uh, thank you for your attention. So there's a question on the on the bridge, a couple of questions on the bridge. Uh, question number one from Matthias May. Uh, have you considered performing your tests on Starlink, which seems to have quite a different behavior regarding latency? That's a bold question. Um, I can take that. Jay wants to take that. Somebody mic him up. I can, yeah, here, hold on. I, yeah, we can, I can use this. No, or that. No, just this. Hello. Yeah. So um, that's the next thing that we are actually doing. So we are um, we actually get the uh, uh, the Starlink uh, you know modem um, in the lab as well, and then we are uh, actually testing uh, these mechanism over um, over the uh, the Starlink connections. The next question, uh, also on the bridge, nice talk. Have you compared your result with BBR? Uh, yes. So um, before this study, uh, we've been looking at BBR performance over satellite link. And then um, we actually found that BBR, um, for the congestion avoidance mode, uh, you know, it actually performs pretty well. Um, even with the uh, the high bit rates, uh, bit error rates. Uh, however, we actually found that um, congestion avoidance performance doesn't really matter too much in overall um, download uh, you know, performance. It's more of the slow start that's really affecting in the high BDP network. And therefore, uh, we, we actually try to focus our energy on improving the slow start uh, you know, performance. And uh, we believe that this will not only um, uh, give a better result for the uh, the high delay network, but um, for most of uh, high BDP network. I mean, we are talking about like what's this sound? Yeah. Okay. I hope it's not the like, same. <laughs> <laughs> multiple, like you know, 
uh, gigabps or uh, hundreds of gigabps network you know, these days and starting from even um, 10 packets and then increasing every rtt like twice it's probably going to take a while to actually reach the uh, the capacity so um, estimating the bandwidth um, and and um, getting uh, exit slow start at the right point will actually help uh, you know the performance a lot. Any questions from the audience? All right, doesn't look like that. So uh, thank you, Miriam. Thank you, Jay. Um, excellent talk.